Is it compulsory for believers to speak in tongues? What about those who speak in tongues and they don't understand what they are saying? All of these we are going to be looking at in this episode of Discussing Issues. Please join us. My name is Omoyele Yenka. God bless you. You are welcome. The subject of speaking in tongues has become controversial to some people. Some believe that you should not speak in tongues as believers. Some people believe that it's not compulsory. Yes, I agree with those people that speaking in tongues is not compulsory, but it's your privilege as children of God. I would like to take us through the book of the Bible, right from the Gospel, what God has to say about the speaking in tongue phenomena. Number one, in the book of Mark chapter 16 verse 17, Bible promises us that those who believe we speak with new tongue. I know some people have issue with that verse of the scripture. However, we all know that in Act of Apostles chapter 2, Bible told us that when the day of Pentecost fully come, the disciples were together in the upper room. And we all know what happened, how the Spirit came like a mighty rushing wind, and a clothed tongue of fire parted and rested upon all of them. And Bible says they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them hot trance. I've asked so many questions from people that why is it that the speaking in tongue of today was not like that of Act of Apostle? I said why? They said because in chapter 2, Bible says the rest that were not with them, they hear them in their own language. But what people speak these days may not even be understood by anybody. Well, I don't know why we conclude that what was said in the heart of Apostle was only understood by people around. We have four times in the book of Acts that people speak in tongues. One of them is Act of Apostle chapter 2 verse 4. The next was Act of Apostle chapter 8. In that place, it was not explicit whether people speak in tongues or not. But Bible told us that the Spirit of God came upon them when Peter and John prayed for the people in Samaria. But in Act of Apostles chapter 10, Bible told us that while Peter was yet speak the word in the house of Colonius, Bible told us that the Spirit of God came upon them because everyone hear them speak in tongues and prophesy. In that place, nobody understand what they said. But Bible told us that they spoke with tongues and they prophesied. And in the book of Acts of Apostles chapter 19 verse 6, that was the fourth time that Bible would record the subject of speaking in tongues. In this instance, Paul met some believers in Ephesus and he asked them if they have received Holy Spirit when they believe. And they told him they don't even know that there is anything called Holy Spirit. So Paul has to explain to them the subject of salvation by grace or by the finished work of Christ and they all accepted that offer of salvation and Bible says Paul laid his hand upon them and the Spirit of God came upon them and they spoke with tongue. Out of the, this three experience only one was recorded that people hear them. I strongly believe that this experience God wants it to be an opportunity to reach out to the unsaved and God need to give them the gift of interpretation of tongues so that in their language, everybody will hear what they are saying in a language that they don't understand. So what happened in Act of Apostles chapter 2 was this. The rest of the apostles in the upper room were speaking a language and they don't know what they are saying. So it's an unknown tongue to them. But the people that came, was able to hear what they are saying in their own language. So it is not the apostles that were speaking a language that people understood. They were speaking a language that they themselves they do not understand. But the people that came, God gave them ability to understand what they are saying in their own language. And that drew them to the saving work of Christ. Now, as a believer, you are not under any compulsion to receive speaking in tongues. People believe that if I have the Holy Spirit inside of me, I don't need to speak in tongues. We need to understand certain facts 
about the working of the Holy Spirit in the life of believer. We have two dimensional work of the Holy Spirit in the life of the believer. The Spirit of God inside of you and the Spirit of God upon you. The Spirit of God inside of you is what God has given to you to become children of God. Anytime you give your life to Christ or you accept Christ into your heart, the Spirit of God enters into you. Bible said, if any man does not have the Spirit of Christ, it's none of his. So it is that Spirit of Christ that makes you a child of God. You don't need to speak in tongues when the Holy Spirit comes inside you. The Holy Spirit inside you is to bath in your spirit the life of God. And that was what Bible meant when it said, except a man be born of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. So when you are born again, you are actually born of the Spirit. And at that instance, you don't need to speak with tongues. The essence of the work of Spirit of Christ in you is to produce the fruit of the Spirit, which is love. According to Galatians chapter 5, he made it known to us that the fruit of the Spirit is love. So you don't need to speak in tongues by becoming a son or a child of God. That is your right as believers. Immediately you give your life to Christ, Spirit of God enters you. In the life of the apostles, in John chapter 20, after the resurrection of Jesus, Bible told us that Jesus entered into the house where all of them are seated. And he breathed into their nostril that they might receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit they receive in that house is the same Holy Spirit we receive when we give our life to Christ or when we surrender our heart to the Lord Jesus. So Jesus realized that they need to have the Spirit inside them. So after resurrection, he breathed into their nostril. And the Bible said he told them to receive the Holy Spirit. Because as at that time, they've not received the Spirit of Christ because Christ has not been glorified. But after that experience, Jesus Christ also told them not to depart from Jerusalem until they are endued with power from on high. So there is another dimension of the Holy Spirit that operates in the life of believer, which has to do with endowment of power. And Jesus told them in Acts of Apostles chapter 1 that you shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Before he said that to them, don't forget, he has breathed into them that they should receive the Holy Spirit. After they have received the Spirit, he told them that there is a need for the Holy Spirit to be upon them this time around. And when the Holy Spirit come upon them, the difference is that the power of God will come upon them. I know some of you will say that I have seen people that spoke with tongues and they are careless with their Christian life. They don't even live a life that looks like they are children of God. I am not in doubt with that. I know a lot of people have dilemma with that. So there's difference between the spirit upon you and the spirit inside you. And the fact that you are speaking in tongues does not make you spiritually matured. The difference is speaking in tongues is a sign that you are endued with power from on high. And it has nothing to do with your maturity as children of God. If you have the spirit of God inside of you, you are guaranteed that you will reign with Christ. Because if anybody has not the Spirit of Christ, it's none of his. So what qualifies you for heaven is the Spirit of God inside of you. But what qualifies you to work for God is the Spirit of God upon you. Without the power of God coming upon you, you cannot be an effective witness of Christ. And throughout the scripture, we understand anytime the Holy Spirit comes upon people, one of the things that happen is that they always speak with tongue. So new tongue is phenomenal of the New Testament. But I know somebody will ask me that what of if I don't speak in tongues? Will I make heaven? Of course, you will make heaven. But you might not be effective in the work of God. But somebody will tell me about that pastor, speaking in tongues is a gift. Because Bible said a gift to some diverse kind of tongues. And anytime you speak in tongues, you should not know what you are saying. You should just be lost. Unlike people that are in the bus, 
in the marketplace, even in their bedroom, and they will be speaking in tongues. They believe that that is not a right tongue because they are just speaking it. I need to explain something to us today. There's difference between speaking in tongues as a gift of the endowment of power from on high and speaking in diverse kind of tongue as a gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, speaking in tongues, which is a generous speaking in tongue that God referred to in Mark chapter 16, verse 17, and what happened in Acts of Apostles chapter 2, verse 4. That speaking in tongue is an initial sign of the Holy Spirit baptism. And one of the reasons God gave that to believer is to be able to pray to God in an unknown tongue. So anytime you are speaking in tongues, Bible told us that you are speaking the language of angels. And no man understand it, albeit in the spirit you are speaking mystery. Anytime you are speaking in tongues, according to the book of Jude 20, it says you are building yourself on your most holy faith. So speaking in tongues helps you to strengthen your faith. Speaking in tongues helps you to pray in a language that only God understands. All of these are privileges you have when you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But there's another dimension of speaking in tongues that is a gift. And that is called speaking in diverse kind of tongue. What is the difference between this and the other one? Simple. The first one, you don't need any inspiration to speak it. Bible encourages us to speak it from time to time. Even Paul the Apostle, he said, I speak in tongues more than ye all. So you can speak it on the way. You can speak it in bedroom. You can speak in tongues while lying down. It's just the same way you can pray anytime, anywhere. But when it comes into diverse kind of tongues, it's ability to receive message from heaven. And that need a measure of inspiration because you need an interpretation for that kind of speaking in tongues to be relevant to the people that are hearing you. And that was what Paul the Apostle was trying to define in chapter 14 of 1 Corinthians. So he was trying to put difference between speaking in tongues and diverse kind of tongue. Brethren, I want us to understand this, that your phone has dual function, one to send message and the other to receive message. So you don't need any color tune to send message. You pick your phone at will at any point in time and you dial the line you are calling. And when it is true, you start speaking with the other hand. But anytime a message is coming on your phone, there will be this ringing tone to alert you that you have a message. So if you want to pick your phone, you pick your phone and speak with the person on the other side. If you don't want to pick your phone, you mute your phone or you off it. The same way, the working of the Holy Spirit. Anytime you want to pray, you don't need any color to. You speak in tongues in prayer. But when God wants to release message, you may choose to release it through diverse kind of tongues. That is when you sense the power of God coming upon you. You know from your spirit and urgency to receive a message. So when you tune in your heart to the Holy Spirit, your speaking in tongue become rapid and become intense. And if you can pray for understanding or the spirit of interpretation of tongue or the gift of interpretation of tongue, you begin to download messages from heaven. But if the environment not conducive for that, you can shut that up and look up to another time to do that. But oftentimes, we saw carnality in people. Messages will be going on. They will be speaking in tongues because they believe that God is using them and they cannot control it. I have a good news for you. Anytime God is using you, you are in control. You can tell God, I can't receive this now. Yes, Bible says the spirit of prophet is subject to the prophet. Anytime you are in an environment, you sense that the message wants to come, you can pray quietly in your heart, trusting God to drop that message. You can even write it down and later deliver it. All this aspect of screaming during the service, creating sin, is a sign of carnality. If you believe with me that truly anytime God uses you, you are always losing sense of time and of environment. 
definitely is not from God. It must be by the spirit of divination. It's only demons that take control of people's senses anytime he wants to use them. But when God wants to use people, he uses their senses along. So brethren, I want you to get aware today that there's difference between speaking in tongues as a sign of Holy Spirit baptism and speaking in diverse kind of tongues as a gift of the Spirit. The latter is not for everybody. The former is the benefit of all believers that so wish to receive it. I believe you have been blessed today. I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Share this message with your friends. Go to our IG and Facebook and YouTube channel for other episodes of our programs. God bless you.